Okay. Uh, let's bring him in here. Let's bring him in here. Can you let him know I got a hearing problem? Okay. He said, can he is hard of hearing. Oh, that makes two of us. I've got a hearing aid coming on the beginning of January. I mean, June. So I'll just try to talk loudly. Is it okay if I... Yeah, I can read lips. Okay, okay, good, good. Mr. Copeland, good morning. Good morning. All right. I just wanted to bring you over and let you talk with Miss Bumpus and see if there's anything you need to ask of your counsel, of Miss Hilton, of the state, or the court before we bring you out this morning. Because it is, <clears throat> we would like to hear your testimony. Okay, uh. Well, I want to That's kind of where we are at this point in time. I've never been truthful a okay. day in my life so until I just made this So, is there anything you would like right to ask now. at this point in time? I don't comprehend none of this stuff that's going on. Okay, well, only thing you can give is truthful testimony. I mean, whatever you know is whatever you know. I mean, that's it. And what we'll say, and Mr. Copeland and I, we have talked about this. I'm not sure what your concerns are. What concerns did you express to Mr. Melnick last week? But if you are, if any of your concerns deal with being locked up for anything, you can't. Like, there's nothing that can happen. The feds, well, that's not, it is true. No, I said that's not his concern. If his concern is his safety, we need to know that. Like, that's not expressed. So we don't know what the concern is so that we can try to resolve the concern. That is what I'm saying. Mr. Copeland and I have had conversations before. I understand some of his concerns as potential criminal liability, hence why we gave you immunity. The federal statute of limitations, done. The statute of limitations, done. So there is nothing. Like, I research it this weekend again. Both of those statutes of limitations for what you and I talked about, which is in 2015 or before, done. You cannot be prosecuted for anything you testify federally or statewide. Immune. Period. So if that is a concern, there is none. There is none because you cannot be prosecuted. The federal statute of limitations is five years. So anything in 2015, five years would have been 2020. Anything statewide is four years. That would have been 2019. Finished. Next concern. What may happen in the street? You know what we have talked about, what we can do as far as living and all that. We have had those conversations. So I'm trying to express to you that we do not want you locked up. I don't know how many times I've got to tell you what I've got to say to you. We do not want you sitting in the cab or whatever they've got you because of this. I know you wanted to talk to me on Friday before you walked into court. We weren't able to talk. If you still want to talk with or without Miss Bumpus, I'm here, little Woody. But we do not want you in custody. We will not. This order, I do not, I don't know if you kept your copy of the order, but this order says you are immune from prosecution, little Woody. Any of it. Literally, judge, you might want to close your ears. Judge, you might want to close your ears. If you confess to a murder on the stand and we don't have any other independent evidence outside of what you say on the stand, you are Im immune from prosecution from what you say in court. So again, I don't know what was communicated to you on Friday. I have no idea. But what the state has assured you, which I have assured you in our private conversations with Mr. Long, as I'm saying in front of Ms. Bumpus, as I told you, that is what the order says. And that's on direct or cross-examination. And that is on direct or cross-examination. So if you're worried about what the defendants may ask you because they may know your business, or well, but if they ask you about things that you might think you might have, you can't be prosecuted for any of those things. I got family members watching this trial, and I don't want my nephew and them to hear the things that I, I may be involved in and think it's okay. But I think that's a separate conversation you can have with them as an honest individual. Like, look, nephews, I done lived the life that I don't want you to live. Don't go through what I've been through. But that's not, that's something you can have outside of being in jail because that's a better conversation you can have with your nephews in person. But they shouldn't have to come to the DeKalb County Jail because you're being held in contempt. You can have that conversation with your nephews tomorrow in person. You can have that conversation with them. You can have that conversation with anybody. You know what's coming up this weekend. Why are we in jail? What are we doing? But y'all did this intentionally. No, we did not. You and I had this conversation, Mr. Copeland, on Friday morning. You knew my child's birthday was next week. But what did I tell you when we met with each other? I said to you, you asked me, what is the one thing that's going to get me in jail? Didn't you ask me that? And what was my response? If you plead the fifth. And that is exactly what you did on the stand. But what did I tell you before I got to that point? I told you the whole time Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I told you you were giving, uh, we were giving you immunity. That I was pleading the fifth. No, you did not. I told you every day I was pleading the fifth. No, you did not. And we told you. I told you my concern. 
And we said we could give you immunity. You said your concern is what they know about you. And when you said that, I said, well, you know stuff about them. And then I said, whatever your concerns are, we can give you immunity. So I didn't tell you I lied on them to get myself out of the situation. And you said you were a liar. That's what you said. You said you were a liar. Was this recorded? No, no. And did he ever say that to Melnick was his attorney? No, this week when we first met you in the car on Friday, we asked you, is Mr. Melnick your attorney? You said he's not my attorney. I haven't talked with him. No, I never said he's not my attorney. I said I haven't talked to him. You said he's not your attorney. You haven't talked to him. Then we continued to have a conversation. At no point did you ever say to us, hey, I want Mr. Melnick here. Hey, put Mr. Melnick on the phone. You didn't make me feel like I needed him. But if you needed him, we would have we would have said, if you would have needed Mr. Melnick, we would have said to you, okay, just call him. So, I mean, that is our position. We don't want you in jail. We just want you to be able to purge yourself by testifying. Whatever your truth is, is what your truth is. But you have to just get an answer to the questions. We believe that your, whatever your truth is, is what your truth is. We know what you said before. I don't know what you're going to say on the stand. But what we know is pleading the fifth is keeping is going to keep you in custody. That's what I know. Now, how you answer your questions is how you answer your questions. I know what you said before, and I know what you said later. I mean, I know what you said before, and I don't know what you're going to say on the stand because you and I never went into full details about any of it. But what I don't want is you to be sitting here in custody. You did it. You told me before you went to the judge with whatever the thing called you went to him with, you told me that I can't, when I'm asked a question, I can say, I don't recall or I don't know. You told me that if I plead the fifth, I mean something, why would I plead the fifth to something I ain't do? And I said, you don't know what I did and what I ain't do. And then you was like something. And then y'all asked me, y'all asked for this immunity. And I was like, it was something. And then Friday, Thursday, or Friday came. And then y'all got, y'all go and tell me, oh, we went to the judge with this. So you got to testify. If you don't testify, the judge gonna lock you up. Right. But that was based upon you. But I told y'all that. No, you didn't. You said, why would I plead the fifth to something I ain't do? And I said, you know, you don't know what happened. And I said, I don't know what happened. Only you know, and them know, I said. But you never said I'm pleading the fifth. You said, what if I do this? What if I do this? What if I do this? I told you, I said, I'm going to plead the, you said, why would you plead the fifth to something that you know you ain't do? So if you didn't have immunity prior to, is that what you're saying? That you feel like he didn't have immunity prior to? Immunity came Friday, right? When I went to jail. The immunity only came after Mr. Melnick. Hold on, hold on. The immunity came after Mr. Melnick sent us an email saying my client is pleading the fifth. That was on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Okay. So after that, that was an empathetic, emp empathic? He was pleading the fifth. Uh-huh. We came and we got this sign. Uh-huh. And then Friday morning came. Okay. Between Friday evening, Mr. Melnick reached out to us and he represents him. He's pleading the fifth. Okay. And when was the last time you talked to him before Mr. Melnick got involved? We talked to him early that day on Thursday. Okay. Then how did he call me? Okay. I was just trying to get a timeline. Sure. Right. So we have been talking since last Friday. So I met with Mr. Copeland last Friday, I think out in the neighborhood. Then he came on Tuesday for court. We talked briefly on Tuesday and then on Wednesday he came. Thursday. No, I think he only came two days. So it had to be Wednesday and Thursday he came. It wasn't Tuesday. It was Wednesday and Thursday he came. And then on Thursday, once we left, is when Mr. Melnick reached out to us and said, my client is pleading the fifth. And at that point is when we went to the next morning and got the immunity motion. And then we spoke on Friday morning. I handed Mr. Copeland this agreement and let him know that he has immunity and that anything he says, we cannot use. Then Mr. Melnick came and then we had court. So you're pretty much saying you didn't ask for this. I didn't, but we gave it. He doesn't have to ask for it. I know. I mean, I'm just saying. Right. He doesn't have to ask for it, but to alleviate whatever his concerns were, we gave him immunity. He didn't have to ask for it. So if we wouldn't have had this, I'm just saying this is so he can understand it. I'm walking him through. Uh-huh. So would he still have to testify or would he have been able to plead the fifth? That's what he's saying. If he did not have immunity? Yes. Yes, he could plead the fifth. That's what I'm... Morning. All right. That's what he's trying to say. He's trying to say he didn't have to ask for this. 